More people have entered the big phone market this year. People like Apple, for example. So how does the original maintain supremacy? It's simple, they tell you. You make the best big phone ever. And that's the story of the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Over the last three generations of the Note, things have always been big, good specs, and a great display. But this time around, the big really didn't get any bigger. The Galaxy Note 4 maintains the 5.7 inch display size set by the Note 3, but what has changed is the resolution. Gone is the old school 1920 by 1080 that is now filled with so many devices and comes in the new Quad HD or 2560 by 1440 resolution that is so rich and vibrant. It's safe to say this is the best display I've ever seen. Even more impressive in the 5K iMac, to be honest. Samsung has really figured out the Super AMOLED display this time around, and they've just made a beautiful display. Sure, it may be oversaturated, but you can't show me a single LCD or IPS display that looks this good and this vibrant. The design has also changed pretty significantly. The back is covered by this new faux leather that removes the fake stitching from the Note 3 for a new softer looking material that is somewhat nice to touch. The front basically looks identical, but flip this guy to any of its four sides and that reveals the new buzz of this phone. The aluminum sides that give this phone one of the best feelings in the hand. Finally, we have gotten rid of the fake plastic chrome. This is all we should be screaming right now. The Galaxy Note 4 feels premium now. And I do mean premium. The metal trim is something to add a lot of significance to the Note 4 in a lot of aspects. The only trouble that I found is it's rather sharp, sharper than the iPhone 5S. Now let's take a look at the hardware. On the left side, we have a volume rocker of great feedback. On the right side, we have a lock power switch. On the top, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And lastly, on the bottom, a micro USB port for charging. Inside, we'll find a quad-core Snapdragon 805 chip clocked in at 2.7 gigahertz, three gigabytes of RAM, and the Adreno 420 GPU and a 3,220 milliamp hour battery. Now, all of that power makes for a very powerful device. The Note 4 delivers its flagship punch with ease as bench Mark show easily how much faster this thing is than anything currently available on the market. Underneath the hardware lays Android 4.4.4 KitKat software for the latest version of TouchWiz. This year, things haven't changed that much. Only things I can really mention is the features have been somewhat streamlined and more organized than the generations of TouchWiz before. And I'll give credit to TouchWiz this year for not feeling as sluggish or slow as it used to be, but that might be just from the extra processing power and GPU power. But things absolutely fly on this phone. Running multiple applications, browsing the web, the only type of lag I've experienced is on startup, but even that only lasts for a mere second or two. One new feature is the new multi-window tab support. You can activate it by swiping down from a corner, but this will shrink your current application into a small condensed window. But get this, it retains all functionality. For example, a Chrome tab with all the scrolling, all the tapping, all the keyboard functionality still 100%. Now, I'm not sure how useful this feature will prove to be, but a cool note is you can have 16 of these open at one time, and maybe it'll be really useful when you're taking photos and while looking up navigation. Now, we can't have a Galaxy Note 4 review without mentioning the S Pen. This year, we have some rearranged air commands, action memo, smart select, image clip, and screen write. And I'll be honest, I really didn't use the S Pen at all. And that's basically it. Next up is the camera on the Galaxy Note 4. First of all, the hardware is impressive. It's the same sensor found on the Galaxy S5, a 16 megapixel camera, but what is new is optical image stabilization. The images from this thing are absolutely beautiful, especially in HDR mode. Colors are pretty brilliant and the detail is really good, probably as good as the iPhone 6 or even better in the case of high dynamic range. Video quality is stellar as well. 4K UHD video of OIS on the Note 4 is the best combination. It's not quite as active as the iPhone 6 Plus, which makes for a smoother and more natural looking video and all the same color and dynamic range attributes carry over from the still images. I think we have a new king of 4K UHD mobile video in the mobile space. It's this. Now on to the battery life. It's good. It's really good. Average on-screen time on this US AT&T model is around five and a half hours. Total on time is beyond a day, not quite two days, but that could really change depending on how you use this device. I'm the type of guy who watches lots of videos, checks lots of emails, hangouts, and different stuff like that. So the Samsung Samsung Galaxy Note 4. It's probably the best Note I've used and probably the best Samsung product I've used in my lifetime. 
And the best part about it is it can only get better from now. I think there's a lot of good stuff to be found on the new Galaxy Note 4. Even if you already own a Galaxy Note 3, if you're looking to upgrade into this new big phone market and want the best, this is the phone for you. And as long as you can live with TouchWiz, there is no phone better than the Galaxy Note 4. But that's still my major bone to pick with this phone. If we lived in a magical unicorn place where we can get whatever we want, and there is such a thing as a Samsung Galaxy Note 4 running Android 5.0 Lollipop, I'd be throwing money and my whole wallet at my monitor. So thanks for watching the full review of the Galaxy Note 4. Make sure to leave some comments below, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the like button. And as always, my name is Marco Hanna, and I'll catch you guys in the next video video.